Peter was a great fisherman. His fame was known far and wide because of his expertise and professionalism. He was the major supplier for a lot of companies, communities and individuals. He never disappointed his clients, his deliveries were always right on time. One day he went fishing but noticed there was no progress as usual. But he went into the ocean with expectation. He did, but was unable to catch any fish. He started looking through his archive of fishing theories, principles, experiences, and even stories. He tried all one after the other. At a point, he combined all and yet, he was unable to catch a fish. How on earth is that possible? Did all the fish in the ocean take a break? Were they moved to another ocean? Was there mass poisoning? Is it spiritual? Nothing logical could explain how a professional fisherman would go fishing in a big ocean all through the night and could not catch a single fish. I mean fishing for eight hours and not even a fish? He thought of all the bills piled up at home, thought of the various supplies he was supposed to buy, thought of the retailers whose means of survival depend on him. In this state of despair, hopelessness, he washed his nets in preparation for his long journey back home. Perhaps the situation above paints the exact situation you find yourself in. You are almost giving up because you have done all that is humanly possible, yet no result. You have consulted the professionals, yet the situation defies all principles known. Do not throw in the towel yet. There is still hope. Yes, you are right. There is still hope. Most times what looks like the end is actually a bend with a less visible B and D. Staying focused for that blessing that will blow your mind reminds me of the story of the wife of one of the sons of the prophets who came crying to Elisha about the death of her husband and how her creditors had taken her two children with the hope of using them as slaves. Elisha thought of what he could do for her and asked her of what she had at home. She replied, your handmaid has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. 2 Kings 4 verse 2 At least she had little oil at home. But come to think of it, what has oil got to do with her situation? Elisha told her, go around and borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not a few. And when you come in, shut the door upon you and your sons. Then pour out the oil you have into all those vessels, setting aside each one when it is full. 2 Kings 2 verse 3 through 4. She could have reasoned or asked what the man of God was going to do with that little oil, but she obeyed the words of the prophet and did accordingly. You might have come to the point where you have sold all you have just to ensure living. Yet life is still miserable and all you want is to receive divine blessings from God. God is telling you not to worry that the blessings coming your way will surpass your expectations. All he wants from you is to obey, just like this woman did. Haggai 2 verse 9 says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The blessings that you will receive will be more than the ones you have ever seen. When the blessings of the Lord come, your situation will change for good. People will call you blessed and you will be left speechless with what God has done. Let us look at some of the things Peter did to leave that state he found himself. Luke 5 verse 3 Peter released his ship to Jesus Christ to be used as a pulpit for propagation of the gospel. Are you actively involved in the propagation of the gospel in your immediate environment? Do you in any way identify with the gospel? 
Most Christians have placed a good dichotomy between themselves and the gospel, especially when at work. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that published salvation, and saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Your work, business, investments are all instruments of the gospel. If they are used in the propagation of the gospel, then they do not have a choice then to be productive. Stay focused with your relationship with God. Serve Him with all you have. Praise Him with every of your strength. Appreciate Him with every fiber in your being. Propagate the good news with every of your possessions. Your Christian life must get to a level where everything about you preaches the gospel. This was the very first thing Peter did. He released his trawler to be used as a pulpit. Prior to now, his colleagues did not know he had met Jesus. Not knowing that he is part of Jesus' disciples, Whenever he is at work, he does not mix business with pleasure, so he had not even preached to any of them. Thank God he retraced his steps and started preaching about Christ to everyone. He won thousands of souls for Christ. But whatever the Lord says is perfect. Whatever the Lord says is the best. Whatever the Lord says is the ultimate thing. It might not sound logical, but it is what bears the solutions you need. When God wants to do the miraculous, He would request you to do something that looks ridiculous to you. Telling Peter to thrust out his nets in the shallow part of the ocean doesn't sound logical in any way. Considering the fact that Peter had toiled all night long, he had tried fishing with various skills at various depths of the ocean, all to no avail. If you want to experience the supernatural blessings of God, you need to obey all He says you should do. Whenever God gives instruction, all He needs is for you to trust and obey. He knows how to bring it to fulfillment. If you can process it, then it is not a miracle, so please stop trying to understand how. Just say yes, Lord, and obey. The blessings coming your way are going to blow your mind. Please be prepared and do all he says. Mary told the servants, whatever he says you should do, please do. And what he told them to do was so ridiculous, but that was the medium for their miracles. What has he been telling you? that you have been trying to analyze or rationalize. Please go and do it immediately, nevertheless at thy word. This was what Peter said when he obeyed the master, which should be your language too. Because Abraham obeyed the Lord and all that he instructed him. It was coupled to him as being righteous and God said to him, and I will make your descendants to multiply as the stars of the heavens and will give to your posterity all these lands, kingdoms, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, or by him bless themselves. God blessed him, all that concerns him, and his business. Whatever Abraham did prosper, likewise, friends, when God leads you to do something, do not hesitate. Just obey and see what He will do. God is faithful. Whatever He says, He will do. Expect the miraculous. Most believers pray for something and yet do not prepare to receive it. Expectations are what makes the birthing of the miraculous faster. It makes your dream become a reality. You cannot accept what you do not expect. You cannot feature in a future you have not pictured. And every future pictured must be captured from the scripture. 
If not, it would be ruptured by the cares of life. Wait for your blessings and when it comes, it will blow your mind away.